could be a fan. Are we live? Oh, uh, shh. You said we're live. Shush your faces, bitches. So, good afternoon, everyone. This is me telling the, the rest of the crew that while we dropped the intro, that we are live. And they decided to keep talking. Also, I just realized as we went live, because one of us was late, it was definitely not me that I did not have everybody sized up for their windows. So as we talk about Tao, I may or may not be clicking buttons and making people go live. This is by far the best run production we've ever had, Brad. I'm I just mean, waiting to be on the screen. By the way, the this. best part of the best part about this is it's not the worst production we've ever had. <laughs> God damn it, Brad. <laughs> you know what? You know all I'm saying is Brad loves Brad. That sounds right. This is what Brad, I think of Brad right here. Brad loves something. And it's definitely Brad. Yeah. yeah. Brad loves Brad. Guys, if you're not excited about Tao, who the fuck are you right now? Because you know what? Brandon said that Tao are slightly better than the index. And I almost mailed him my fist in the mail to punch him right in the throat <laughs> because I think that Tao are fantastically set to be a force in the meta with all four factions. And if you don't believe me, fuck you, because I think that all four factions have value. Like, for instance, Tom and Sean Rice are all about retaliation, Cadre. Uh, I talked to Lyle and he was about Monka. Both of you guys, between Justin and uh, Brandon, have been back and forth about Moncon and, and several others, to be honest with you. And I really want to make the crew detachment work because I actually think it's legit because of the five up invul. You know what I mean? It's just uh, um, anytime you take a mass army and you say, I make 33% of my saves, I'm sorry, but that, that it may not be the best the best attachment but you have to at least look at it you know what i mean and go oh i can just put you in your deployment zone and tell you that that's what you do for the rest of your life okay so i didn't want to give any serious credits <clears throat> to the crew detachment come on man and then i wrote it down on paper just so brad would shut the fuck up <laughs> and, uh, i mean he, by the way he's not wrong <laughs> So when I wrote it down on paper, I realized that uh, before the game starts, if you just add up all the OC of every model in the list, it's about 300. It's Bonkersville, guys. I'm just sorry, but like, I just thought about the game. For instance, so Justin and I played it at Adepticon. If he was playing the crew detachment and literally went first, I actually think that there's zero chance that I have an ability to win the game. To be honest, Justin, if you would have taken the crew detachment, you know, with the uh, four deployers and the scouts and everything and just jam me in my deployment zone, mm -hmm. I I literally do not see a, it, a way out of it. You know what I mean? With yeah, and, 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 the you, whole army you scouts are, uh, and infiltrate. So right. It's like, and I'm just saying. Like half I was, of it has a reactive move. It, 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 but I'm saying, like, literally, we played a very tight game where, mm -hmm. where we happened to take a few more objectives, and that was kind of the... There was one play that the right corner object that move was. Oh yeah, the, there was like one obvious misplay there. And yeah, then, like, but it didn't help that Eloise decided to fail one hundred percent of her saves. But <laughs> it, was, it was actually a hundred percent. I don't think she made a single save. It was no, really bad. Seriously, it was it was <laughs> really really bad. I'm sorry, but Eloise failed so many saves that it messed up my plan. She like really she rolled so bad that I didn't. She ruined my actual play. But here, here's the big thing about that is if you guys had the four deploying and we couldn't do what I did, I, I actually don't think we could have won. I, I don't think we could have won the game. And that's the power of the crew. I don't think the crew detachment's overpowered. I just think that it's playable, guys. I think that people aren't giving it enough play because of the damage of the other of the other detachments. And that's kind of what I want to throw out there. Is I just I really think that that detachment has play, guys. If you're making, Unless, if you are, well, well good thing are, I uh, sent you a list, Brad. I sent you a crew list in your email. 
I, I will check if, it right now. If it is PowerPoint formation, I will put it in the show. It is it is one thousand percent not PowerPoint formation. Because you, I literally never liked you. Your your excuse for being late does not mean I have to change my plan. Uh, my, my excuse for being late was my mom literally drove at the speed of smell from Easter dinner. <laughs> so, if, so how do we want to do are, this? If you are playing a... I was trying to say this a second. If you are playing a melee-ish army and most of your units don't have the fly keyword, I don't think you can beat the crew list. I just don't ever think you'll get to move. I, I, feel, I, I agree with you on that, Lyle. It's just... It, it, I don't think it's the most powerful list, but I just think it has plenty. I actually think that the crew list for me feels like a team tournament list on steroids. That's that's what I really think. It'll also do something that is really annoying for a lot of players and really frustrating for a lot of melee armies, which is just exist at you and win the game, right? Mm -hmm. It has so much OC. 100%, brother. That it'll just sit. 20 models on an objective and be like this is oc40 it's mine go away and you have a guy with feel no pain you have a guy yeah. with stealth you can use the the war shaper to potentially bring that squad back depending on how they have the again gear. dude think about it I you know you if you don't to. use your cp for anything else but just bring back crew if you're bringing back 60 to 80 guys with oc2 yeah i mean that's legit man yeah, we'd have to we'll have to look at the list people came up with. Uh, I when I made the crew list, I didn't even put the warshaper for, for, in there. Guy, for like, me, I don't even, I don't even I, have room for I, it. it I made matter. the basic bitch of basic bitch list. I went with my cop and I just said, Farsight with three fusion guys, three sky rays because I think they're even if they go up ten points, the value on them is amazing. Piranha, really? yeah, piranhas, three piranhas, two riptides. And then I filled it in with crude, crude hounds, st one unit of stealth suits. Okay, I'm going to go out on this right now. If you're playing Tau and you don't take one unit of stealth suits, you're, you should check into the Betty Ford Clinic because you are on some sort of drug. Holy shit. Four deploy, <laughs> reroll ones, reroll, sorry, reroll ones to hit and wound. Come on, man. That's Bonkers Town for 65 points. Come on, bros. That's insanity. What, what are your guys' thoughts? Give me your give me your guys' go-to. You know, before well, we go into the list, my, let's my go to the go-to units. Almost none of the things you just said. Mine yeah. has most of it. I mean, my I mean, Monkot list does not have sky rays, does not have piranhas, does not have crude hounds. Who <laughs> are you and <laughs> what did you do with Lyle? Yeah, well, I just decided to spam the OC thirty breacher units. Oh, you know what? It, you know OC, I accidentally how, how I did killed. How you know it's a thirty? Is that an enhancement? Uh, one enhancement. of the enhancements says you pick an objective in no man's land, and uh, all he, of the models he, in your army yeah. get plus one. OC Sorry, on that. Okay, Lyle, Lyle said the OC thirty, but he said OC thirty on one objective. I mean, sure, and you're going to kill else. the other objective. <laughs> I mean, true. Yeah. You're going to you're going to choose the neutral zone objective. Yeah. But my thing with the breacher fish guys, I don't think of them as an offensive tool. I'm just saying, I play orcs a lot, clearly. If my orcs can move as far as goddamn breacher fish can move, holy shit, I would be taking boys every single day and twice on Sundays. You can move block the shit out of your opponent with breachers. Dude, you don't need to do any damage. I don't care if I kill a single model. But, if I can but that's stop... The point, but that's the point of the Breacher unit. For 90 points, I don't know if you see any other unit in the game right now that has that flexibility between I need to kill something or I need to play the mission. True story. It's, I, it's absurd. But I think that yeah. you start with, in, in my head, besides the crew detachment, because then I want more crew, if I'm playing Retaliation, if I'm playing Kayan, if I'm playing Mon Ka, I want... Two breacher fish. That's how I start my list. I just start mm -hmm. with two breacher fish and I move on because they are just too valuable. If I'm playing Justin right now and I just put ten dudes in his way on turn one and ten dudes in his way plus a plus a devil fish on turn two, and he doesn't get out of his deployment zone, I don't give a shit what he does the rest of the game. I just I'm winning. He scored up zero and I scored a fifteen. He could table me on turn four. Who gives a shit? I'm 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 literally sure, but... winning. The, the Breachers are crazy, too, because, like, they play in completely different ways in, like, Montcalm and Kalyan, which is what you would want. 
but they're like the best unit in the army in both detachments. And you like to, no matter which way you play them, Montcalm, you're move blocking, you're shooting yeah. Kalyan, you're going to hide in your devil fish until turn four, and then you're going to come out and you do the most damage in the book against any guys. Thing. But before yeah. we go to stuff, I'd like to go to the law real quick because I think that Eloise has a great question, which is Eloise says, How do you foresee the new Tau book influencing list building and army composition choices for Tau players? And what I think about this, why I love this question so much is because this is why I'm so excited about the Tau book. I wasn't excited for Admech. I wasn't excited for Dark Angels. I'm back to being excited for Tau because we've literally been having arguments since, what, Friday in Adepticon? And I think that all of our army arguments are legit. That's my whole point. You have four... Actually, we had more players involved, but like I'm saying, just in, in the people involved right now, we had four legit Tau players that can rock out Tau. We have the Adepticon champion right now with Tau. And the thing is, is that we all had disagreements. What was the best Tau army? And that's what I think is the best thing right now is that the Tau Codex has opened up the ability. Because I actually think that before the new codex if you're not running brandon's list you're a fool you're a fool you're a fool after school <laughs> but hey so brand i'm gonna stop you here so we got 17 people watching why don't we throw up a poll hit me on which army detachment's best I i'm on Maka, it right now crew ramp or uh oh, retaliation or kaya i got it you, you guys it take me a second but tell me tell me about what you think about the detachments while i put up the poll guys okay so Brandon and I talked about this a lot at Adepticon and uh, like the list I was playing at Adepticon um, is really good at just pressuring, like going up the board and stuff. And I think it's going to be really good in the Monca detachment because like that's how that's my play style. My play style is to like be in your deployment zone turn one and you never get out of it. Right. So in some armies, that's not great against like wraiths and stuff like that. But I think with modcon like the the mobility and everything like that you're going to be able to kind of pin people in early on i mean one of the things i was floating around was taking a squad of three piranhas and you can move it up the table and advance it up the table it's a huge move blocking thing of toughness seven vehicles uh and i mean in theory you can move that thing 29 inches on the first turn of the game and still shoot a bunch of fusion guns and seeker missiles into somebody's backfield. So, and and then they're just stuck there dealing with this not very expensive unit. I mean, it's 165 points and it's just there and you have to deal with it. Oh, on top of it, there's 20 breachers in your deployment zone. Um, do, do you see yourself? I'm going to give this to all three of you. I'm going to start mm -hmm. with Justin and then I'll go around the corner because that's how we're based. Is there a list, any list? that you don't start with 20 breachers and two breachers. Basically, two breacher fish. 10 breachers, two devil fish. The, the crew, the crew, crew? Yeah. The but, I'm sorry. But, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Besides the, cr besides the crew yeah, list. Maybe, maybe retaliation. Yeah. Even, retaliation you know what? I, I would argue that. I still think the retaliation gets it. You know what? I'll, I'll be the counter-argument to that. You, you need infantry in the retaliation cadre, or you're going to experience what I experienced at the Warhammer World Championships it, last November. Exactly. Where Brand your crisis suits can't do shit. I, Brandon I and I just had this argument. I'm taking, I'm taking 20 far stalkers and tw at least 10 crew in the retaliation cadre before I take any breaches. No, it, it, Brandon at the, the World Championships had the problem, and this is why, kind of tell you the truth, this is why Brandon and I have been like not super pro, because Tom, Tom Ogden and Sean Rice are super big on retaliation, but both of us have been, Brandon and I have been very eh, about it because of his experience at the Worlds, which was if you get Tau right up on top of somebody's face, even if you do max damage, you're still up on top of somebody's face, bro. You know what I mean? They still have that. And now they're way less durable. Like they exactly. don't have 100%. the six wounds. They don't have the six man squads of the vulnerable saves. Right. Like, and, and you just get picked up, man. Like I just I feel like you need that that and so like at the Depth Gun Championships, when I was looking at both Justin's list and I was looking at Brandon's list, I thought Brandon had the the advantage on lists Tau versus Tau. I thought Justin had the advantage on anything big because he had the hammer rats. It's just a fact. 
But Tau versus Tau, I thought that Brandon had the advantage Tau versus Tau. Now, b both of them had what I like to refer to as the onion. You gotta do the goddamn Shrek. You need that onion, that layers of, of Tau defenses. Sure, you hit my first level of defense. I don't care. It's crude hounds. It's breachers. It's whatever. The second level is stealth teams. Anything that else has 18-inch guns. But in the end, you always have to layer back that onion to get to the riptides, the sky rays, the whatevers. You know, everything in the backfield. And I think that that's how a Tau army has to play. And both of you guys had that. And both of you guys had great success great success playing that at adepticon but you have good success playing that period you guys played that in the teams and you've played that before with good success and you're going to have more success because the tower book is wildly more powerful than it is in the index so brad i'm going to stop you so we're going to go to the wall Hit me. so eloise brought up a good point there are people who have never played tau before or have only seen kaya Lyle, would you like to explain the differences between the four detachments? So, hit me with it. You know, it's a good person to put that out there. So, Kalyon is still plays functionally the same. You, if we're approaching it from a macro standpoint, but but tell everybody, have... tell everybody the differences between each one. What they do, I, tell, I tell each person what they do. I, I let let, let me, the man speak. Let me roll. Let me cook. <laughs> yeah, let him cook. Let me cook. Uh, so Kalyon's uh, ability is still, you get exploding, uh, sixes on turns three, four, and five. Um, you get double exploding sixes if you're guided. So the Kalyon attachment still has to have a bunch of small trading pieces early to try to get out and score points and force your opponent to come out and do stuff. Uh, because you don't really do anything, especially now that there's only a three man crisis suit instead of a big six man that you can put the extra, turn early of Kalyan on, you're just not going to do any damage, any super meaningful damage on turns one and two if you don't set your list up to do that. So you got to play a slow game and then try to, you know, win late, which means you got to build a list that's going to focus on playing the primary early. Motka is the opposite. Motka wants to dominate the primary for the first three turns and try to kill your opponent off the table in the first three turns. Um, they get their ability on turns one, two, and three. Um, and they get nothing on turns four and five unless you take an enhancement. I was saying unless uh, you take the enhancement. If uh, you or their their ability is if uh, I'm sure remembering which one's which, but some combination just like Kalyan, uh, if you're guided or not guided, you get assault and lethals um, in some Le combination of those two. Yeah, it's, it's lethal hits base, <laughs> and then you get assault and assault when you're guided. guided. Okay. Um, and that one, we got to see exactly, like, it's very obvious what they wanted to do. We got to make sure they word it in a way that, like, uh, you're going to have to take, like, half your list is going to have to have assault weapons for that to work. Um, currently, all your army needs to have assault weapons for it to work, which I'm sure is not what they intend for that to be. Um, Retaliation Cadre is basically all of their rules and all of their strats uh, only affect battle suits. So Crisis Suits, Stealth Suits, Riptides, and Ghost Kills. Um, I don't think um, the storm surges had the battle suit keyword. I believe um, they do, but I'll check. They, they, but yeah. the thing is, is about this. They before you go on, the detachment rules are six inches and twelve inches, which is for me bonkersville. But continue. Yeah. So you get at twelve inches. If you're a suit, all of your armies get plus, or all of your weapons get plus one strength. Doesn't matter what kind of weapon they are. If you're a suit and you're within six inches of the thing you're shooting at, all of your weapons get an extra AP. Um, so it's uh, that is currently the only army that has access to fire and fade, um, which makes sense because it was always crisis suits that did that anyway. Um, so it uh, is still it is kind of the Tom Ogden style of list. If you like to play Gundams and you like to move and shoot and run away and uh, try to see if you can set up crippling damage with all your Gundams. Uh, Kadra, or the Retaliation Cadre is going to be your go-to. Uh, the Crute Detachment makes uh, Crute Carnivores battle line, so you can take six units of them. And then um, if you are a unit with the Crute keyword, you get a five-up invuln in shooting and a six-up invuln in melee. And then all of the enhancements and stratagems so, only affect Crute units. So huge, by the way. It's it's a board control army. You're putting two hundred bodies on the but table. Twenty crude with a five up invuln is legit, guys. We've talked about the and stealth. Yes. And feel no pain. 
Fino Pain <laughs> Stealth. It minus one to hit with the Fino Pain with a five up invuln. You're literally negating almost forty percent of well, all the fire that's coming at it, you. It also might as well be an army rule because you're always going to take three of them. But you also are going to get to redeploy like all of your crit units at the beginning of the game. True story. Because um, you're going to take two of those guys and, and they do three, three characters, and each character redeploys two crit units. Yeah. So you're going to redeploy yeah. if you want to 120 units or your infiltrators or whatever, which works out now that they've changed the way infiltrate works with redeploy. Yeah, which guys, is great. I, I'm just um, saying. I think and then the, half your army is going to have a reactive move. They get within nine inches. Half your army can move d6 inches in response. Fruit party underrated so far. But it's, it's not killing anything. No, they don't kill shit. You know they what? Just, they're they're holding off your deer life. I, you know what? I, I I I argue with you guys a hundred percent because that crew list plays exactly the way the Tau think of the crew in their society. Hundred percent, Lyle. <laughs> Here's the thing: you take eight hundred to a thousand points. Okay, eight hundred to a thousand points of fruit, and then you take a thousand to twelve hundred points of pure fuck you up Tau. And I'm telling you right now, that's a good army. It, it might not so be the best army, my, but it's a goddamn good army. I don't know what list you came up with. Uh, my list was um, three Riptides. No, I ended up going down to two Riptides because I really wanted the Farstalkers in the list. So two Riptides, three Sky Rays, and then everything else is a crew model. Yeah, I have 120 I, crew carnivores, it, 20 far stalkers characters. I, I took out I still one, have dark strider because you need it. Two but, between the two of our lists, uh, what I did is I took out one character, and then I put in two more piranhas. But we're we're functionally the same right there, I, guys. I just think that that list is legit. It gets in the way. It scores points. It plays like tenth edition plays. It, it, it is it the best army? Probably not. Is it an army? that will win games because of sheer volume of goddamn OC bodies, a thousand percent. So Meta Monday wants to know if it's less than 1400 points of crew, is it really a crew list? I mean, it's a hundred percent, man. 800 to a thousand points of crew is where <laughs> when, I'm at. At the, yeah. you, you can't when go, you put 260 points of crew on the table for 1350. Yeah. I think you could call it a crew. List. Yeah. It's bonkers, Bill. It, it, to be honest, it, I talked to both of you guys about this, Lyle and Brandon. I've accidentally put in a shit ton of crew, even in the other detachment list, because of the fact that they're so cheap and their OC is so good. Well, Justin, where are you at right are also now? Also, the most improved unit in the book. So. Agreed. Yeah. Ju Justin, where are you at right now? What What are your thoughts on crew? Well, is it not, I think uh, actually, I think give me give me really both. Good. Give me uh, both. Okay. The, the units and the detachment. Okay, so I think crew are really good. I talked to Brandon about this, and I pointed this out uh, actually during the team event. Um, crew all have the Tau Empire faction keyword, so they function in the other detachments as well, which means that crew get the Monka. Um, they don't get the guiding ability because they don't have. So they still don't have good. further greater good. Right? They they can't guide, so That's they can't guide, right. and they can't be guided. But they but, get lethal hits. But they get lethal hits on the first three battle rounds of the game. So you take a crap load of crew in Monka. They still are doing what crude are doing they're still oc2 you just don't have 120 of them you have 60 of them but that's still a lot of crude uh and you take a bunch of crew talks uh you can buff them with a lone spear that'll make them reroll hits uh and then there's a that strategy guy's so good dude lone, yeah lone spear is so good lone spear is amazing i can't wait until that model so, comes out so so we don't know the points so they we don't know any, the points they could be right. anywhere from 85 points which I mean, was published in the codex uh, to 55 points uh, oh screw you I'm guys think, I, we know I'm the points they're gonna be about i think they're gonna be about 70 yeah, this is a I, sunday I 70, this is a sunday is night stream let's just say we know the points yeah <laughs> so um, if crew are actually 55 points for 10 broken. guys they're and not. They're the first they're hundred percent not. That crew, How about that? <laughs> if if crew come out as their current cost, I'm just saying the first person that can actually put this crew army on the table will probably win the GT. They take it to. I got this. I got it, gentlemen. I will do it. But they're not going to be 55 points. There's zero chance. <laughs> I mean, no, I can't for imagine. for you to Literally. say there's zero chance, that means you would need to convince me that GW had any idea what they were doing with points in the first place. I mean. They, they they have received three major buffs that will mean they cannot be 55 points. They will you probably know, be right. to you, Again, Lyle, you're getting my, the no, no, no. Is you're assuming GW doesn't have their head up their ass. 
That's my point. <laughs> I think it's they, way more likely they think, oh, everyone will take like one crew unit and it'll be cool and fluffy, and no one's going to do that if they're 55 <laughs> points. They, they, they will not be 55 points. They will probably be closer to 75 or 80 because they have sticky objectives. They're OC2, and they now have some special weapons in the squad. There's no chance that there's the amount of points. Sanity says they'll be like 70 to 75 points for 10, but they, they to Lyle's to point, eight, we've, we've eight, seen eight, plenty eight, of times. I'm not going to assume finish. GW knows what they're doing until they yep. prove it to me. Yeah, there, we've seen plenty of times where they've been like, all right, well, let's just leave this because I mean, it's a new model. So let, I want to push be, But I'll, also, guys, let's be honest. To be, hold on, to be fair, they've also general grievous several units a lot of times they've they grabbed all of the lightsabers and beat the shit out of the units before mm -hmm. oh yeah right. so let, let's look at the poll real quick and i think whatever's losing the poll we should talk about how we can make that list we're telling yeah. you you know what guys you know I'll, just I'll, assign I'll, all of us a list and let's go you know, I, but, but I, actually, <laughs> I, I want to be negative nancy right now because sean sean rice and tom ogden are wildly excited about retaliation and i am super not and i've talked about this with lyle several times because i think what one of the main problems is is the main problem that brandon had at the worlds this year i mean obviously it was ninth edition but it was 10th edition oh it was 10th right? edition oh yeah, shit it was just, I forgot it was it was just november edition. yeah it, time I, time's I meaningless think to me. Retaliation cadre is super primed to do well in Europe. It, but yes, they're all in on Europe though. They're you you're you're not even talking about Europe. You're talking about UKTC terrain. Even on WTC terrain, I think the, the retaliation cadre is going to be way better than I, it is on GW. I don't terrain. think it is a bad detachment. All I'm saying is, right now, if I play Brandon, if I play Justin, if I play Lyle with a retaliation cadre. And I drop down and I totally fuck up part of their army. The problem is, is that all of their special rules happen with either 12 or six inch range. And then I have to deal with the fact that I'm six inches away from Justin and I have to go, Hey man, um, a little awkward that I'm standing here right now with also no screens, no buffs. And he's like, yeah, man, I'm about to kill you. Like, I'm I'm real annoyed that you killed whatever was right in front of you, but also I'm about to delete your fairly priced unit, by the way. But the, it's a, the the drop in wounds and the loss of invulnerable saves on two of the three crisis suit yeah, squads. It's also they're three, just not durable. It's anymore. three guys, also guys. Yeah, it's just mm -hmm. it, it, they're they're it, good trading pieces. They're though. good trading pieces, but like if okay, say I've already I'm playing. You ready? I'm playing the, the duo of fucking Justin and fucking Lyle. And I drop in and I roll average on most of the board and shitty on one unit. That means that I didn't kill everything in front of me and I'm just standing in front of them. That's my problem is, is that the, the problems of Tao have always been you touched me. The reason that your guys' list, for instance, that Adepticon works so well is because you had layers you had literally an onion you had you had layers of guys in front of you so no one can ever touch enough shit with retaliation it feels like i'm inviting you and maybe i'm wildly wrong i've been wrong before i'll be wrong again but my whole thing is is that when i look at that detachment i go those are super powerful but i don't want to be standing right in front of justin cook with my whole fucking army after i blew my load and just with absolutely no models between me and him and that's that's my problem right now what do we think of retaliation with a bunch of big suits that have fall back and shoot because both ghost kills and riptides have that just innately built into them i mean and they're you, durable are, are you talking they're, about they're like a like a big like a triple riptide triples ghost kill something list? like that right like like something like that or like five of a like a combination of five of those models and then like crisis suits with sunforge and then like you know screens with crew you know far stalkers or carnivores piranhas tetras maybe if you have points for it some backfield tanks stuff like that i actually don't I mean, think you have enough you don't have enough killing power yeah that that's okay. fine the other issue is that like you're then just not going to really take advantage of like half the stratagems 
Like those, you're not you're not getting to deep strike three inches with a riptide, you know. That that's true. Yeah, but and I think nobody's letting kinda, you do that. I think. Yeah, I mean, I deep think striking three inches with a riptide. I think that detachment. Anyway. I think that detachment is designed around them expecting you to do trades with uh, crisis suits um, and try to like just do to three inch and then die and mm-hmm. try to like. I think that's the way they like intended that army to come together. So, like, if you just a shoe away from that, your army might be better, but then you're just losing, like, half the power of the detachment. Yeah. Let's go Let's go to the wall real quick, guys, before we talk more about retaliation. Middle money goes, or 800 points of crew to move up and hold the middle, turn one to force your opponent to come out in the open so you can drop in and kill at turn two. And to be honest with you, brother, I think that's what a lot of the armies are going to look like, no matter what the detachment. It, it, it might not be... 800 of crude it might be 600 recruit and breach your fish blah 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 but like there's a lot of play with making your opponent do shit and then you capitalizing on it and that's i think, I think the calion detachment for sure starts with 20 far stalkers 30 crude three piranhas and then you go from there and that's exactly what you're going to try to do is just sticky the middle then run up and move block your opponent while you score points before your meaningful units have to move now are, are you assuming current points or are you assuming more expensive Current points. I have. To, we have to. Yeah, I have no reason. I, while I understand they shouldn't be fifty-five points, the other issue is that every single codex that has come out so far, the points that they updated just kept everything the same as it was in MFM, except for the new units that were in the book, and then those were accurate to the book. So this would be the first book in tenth edition that did not follow that trend. So again, I'm just going to assume that's going to continue to be the pattern until they prove to me otherwise. I agree with you. Crew shouldn't. Be 55 points but i don't know gw notices that so we'll yeah. see eloise is not wrong ghost kills are weirdly tanky i've been mm-hmm. saying it all along brad and you're like ghost kills are trash i don't like those kills <laughs> that much <laughs> screw you the problem is they're not more tanky i think they're still less tanky than a riptide and they do dramatically worse damage uh, 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 they just don't get shot at because loan op is, I mean, magical. but they, but sure. they, but yeah. by like, the way, what are they doing to but, affect the board? But then? they do. So let's just talk about that. You know what? Screw you guys. We're going to the wall. And when I say wall, I mean list wall. Brandon, you sent me over a list, and Justin I sent did. me over a list. Let's talk about those two lists, and then we'll move on to Lyle's list, which is I'm going to take credit for because Lyle and I talked about it, and I I stole everything that he told me, and I made it a list. All right, so the first list I have up there, um, this is a Kion detachment. I just went with my Depticon list minus the Crisis Suits and how does it actually look. But tell me so, tell me why about these Cadre Fireblades, because in my mind, I'm just gonna, you can tell me I'm wrong, but because of the fact that I'm in my mind, these Breacher Fish feel like such a move block, feel like such a stepping stone. They do auxiliary damage, but I don't care about them. The Cadre Fireblade... A fire blade feels like bonus points for move blocking because with the list so the list i have now before in the index list i had a unit of seven crisis suits and a single solo commander with all cyclic ion blasters that unit the big crisis suit block was dishing out 72 shots a turn they could clear stuff that the rest of the army couldn't just by sheer quantity of shots and by losing that I feel like I need another unit to pick up the slack and the cadre fire blades help me getting those extra shots to do maximum overload on a unit. I could put three beach breacher teams into whatever I need to have die. And I could guarantee it by putting 120 shots in it with full rerolls of rerolling wounds. I, I, will, I just, I, I want shots. I, want I, I got that. You, want, you, you want the volume. Tell me about double ghost kill instead of single ghost kill, because I actually think that ghost kills, while good, are unfortunately adequately priced. And when I look at units, I don't want adequately priced. I want under-costed and OP. I want everything that's OP in the army. So the reason for the ghost kills is because on Kion, they have a new strat that allows you to take up Shadow Sun, a stealth squad, or a ghost kill, put in an ongoing reserves, and then you can redeploy it. And having the ghost kill with Lone Op just being able to hang out in the corners and harass people and be really annoying, and then say, oh, you're getting close. Okay, I'm taking them off the table and putting them in your deployment zone. That allows me to get in the backfield relatively easy. And with this um, list, do, it's... Do, I, do I need two? I'm not sure, 
but I have to, so I want to try it. You know, the thing is, is that for me, I love this list. I love your initial list. I would just prefer one ghost kill because it's a so lot of like, points I could if, free up for a lot of other stuff. The same, if points are the same as they are at MFM, one ghost kill is the same as 30 group. You know what? Agreed. Or that's five that, points that, more. Yeah, that, that's kind of my that's kind of my point on that, Lyle, is I would like to see just more shit. Um, yeah. Going into that, Justin, are you going Montcon this list that he sent me? Correct? Yeah, I think the plan was to go Montcon. And, and again, like I need to see where the points so end up with like the trail shaper and stuff. Before we go into the whole list, let me ask mm -hmm. one question. If you do this list again, is Triple Tetra a must-have when you have the one CP strat for something that dies, you get full rerolls for us the rest of the game. Not, not really, not really. Yeah, it was just an, it was an add in there. It could just be stealth suits instead. Th th that's kind of where I was going. It it's could just, be more crude. I would like more trash, basically. The, the only, yeah. the only thing yeah. that I'm really big on. Tetras, is, Tetras in a pinch are amazing trash because they are seven wound toughness I mean, seven vehicles. I mean, holy shit! It's also two of them. You know, when yeah, they, for, yeah, they they do block a significant. And, they also and infiltrate list, too. They, yeah, they infiltrate story. so you can help with and your that list. Moves. I don't know if you notice that there's a squad of three piranhas in there. Like, tell me, that okay, was, actually, that was, run through the list. Uh, tell tell us okay. what's up because I actually so, like so this it's, list it's, quite a bit. It's it's really similar to what Brandon's got, where it's got cadre fire blades. It's got um, you know, it's got some rip tides. It's got the sky rays. You know, it's got the the sky rays and the rip tides are that. You know, you're talking about the onion. They're the they're the core of that, right? Like they're the Kind of the last things riptides usually stand in front of the sky race because they can fall back and still shoot so you know they they get that extra added buffer um but then it's got like a bunch of trash it's got all those it's got five piranhas that are going to scout up in your face it's got a bunch of far stalkers um with a trail shaper and what that lets me do is i get to deploy that unit forward and then redeploy it back and, and brandon and i measured it out what is it like 28 inches or something you could, like that you could, you could take up 28 inches of real space just with bodies that's not including the mm -hmm. and that was pushback for the and that was before the far stalker was in there too right yeah so that's an extra yeah. four inches yeah because they're all on 28 millimeter bases and the characters on 32 you also get to do this before um you also get to do the redeploy after the dice roll to go first with the far stalker which is a unique thing most things don't it's, do that it's, it's rather huge on that and the thing is is right. that the to be honest with you the only thing i was very big on your army mm -hmm. i i'm still back and forth on the cadre fire blades because i'm back and forth on throwing the breacher fish away. not throwing them away but like if i see my opportunity for mm -hmm. a knight list uh orc list you know anybody that has a lot of mounted vehicle whatever I'm just mm -hmm. looking at those opportunities just to lock people in their zones for two things. The, yeah, but Brad, what the issue with the Kadra it. Fireblade problem you have, Brad, is that in the Montcada attachment, you have to take them because they're the people that are supposed to carry your enhancements. Yeah, I, I, I apologize. And you have to take two enhancements. So uh, and I, didn't, I didn't list any enhancements for Justin, but something we have to keep in mind at the Montcada attachment, you can have two Breacher fish 27 inches away turn one. True story. That You're dropping... A two units of ten plus character, and you're putting in uh, eighty four shots, close range on your opponent's deployment zone objective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you with lethal cripple, hits, probably you will, you will cripple. Hit. Yeah, you will cripple yeah. somebody, and it, that's why. It, that's be, why you need the tetras for full guys. Rules. To be fair, I think I'm going down to one tetra in Manka because I want I more. Have a be, list that has one unit of because I think has, you're going to miss it. I, I might, but like between the strat. I, the, dude, that strat might be the most powerful. I swear to God, guys, I think people are sleeping on it. The Montca strat, everybody, it's one CP. If you kill a Tau Empire unit, one CP, every single unit in your army gets full rerolls against mm -hmm. it for the rest of the game. Not turn, not phase, game. Yeah, and it's like... It's like giving something oath of moment for the whole game. Right. It's fucking crazy, dude. And yeah. th that's why I think that I can get away with less stuff. Maybe I'm wrong, to be honest with you. Maybe I'm wrong. The, but the I, issue, but... you still need Tetris, though, because, like, the point of your army is you're going to go really fast in a specific direction. I still think two is the sweet spot. You think two? I don't I don't like three. Just... I still think two because if, if you sit your big unit that way and I get fully rolls to the left flank, but I see an opportunity to cripple you if I can collapse your right flank. I need the ability to get rerolls on that side. You know what? Maybe you're right on that. It's just here's the thing. 
There's so much good shit. How about this? We agree on this one thing. There's so much good shit right now in the Tao book. There's that, a lot of good shit. Yeah, that it's it's hard. Yeah. Actually, let's go back to this though, uh, Justin, on your list before we debate the other detachments and everything else. Tell mm-hmm. me why a three man unit instead of three one man units. Well, I have two one man units. I just buffed one of the units up to a three man unit, and that it's like again more board space control, right? It's a it's a three fairly large like they're th- those models are wide right like you know you know prawn with, is with a, the big t's it's so huge they're yeah, the, they're yeah, the best they're, unit yeah. ever for move block yeah so they they fly like we were talking about move blocking and pinning people into their deployment zone this is a, a toughness seven unit of, of fast skimmers that again is going to be able to move for one cp uh advanced six inches it's going to move 29 inches on the first turn of the game I mean, and still, because it has, you know, we were talking about the concern about, um, I think, the assault activation on on things. They have gun drones, so they have assault weapons, so they can target something. And then if you're guiding it with Tetras, the, all the weapons turn into assault, and then you pump three fusion guns that are D6 plus four damage and six seeker missiles into someone's face turn one. So you blow up any train that are hot in the objective? While blocking deployment zone. Yeah. And then you could literally wrap with breachers and kill whatever comes out of that vehicle just by wrapping and tapping. Yep. You know what? Let's start an argument right now. Tell me why accelerator burst cannons instead of smart missile systems. Smart missile systems lost twin linked. Yeah. There I, I agree, but like it's also the anti elder anti a lot of things. Fly I, keyword is everywhere out there, guys. But they still lost twin linked. That's the problem. I like smart missile like, systems. There's a but... case for it because because of the full rerolls to hit against fly into the Eldar. It, it, assuming when the Eldar book comes out, we see a lot of Eldar, which I you know you you would just expect, right? So you'll get full rerolls to hit with lethal hits. It does make up for twin linked, you know, a little bit, right? So, you know, and it's still six shots and it's a longer range. I mean, there's a good case for smart missiles it, in just, this kind of list. For me, it's just hard. I agree. Burst cannons are better mathematically, but man, indirect is hard for me to give up because indirect is always, especially with rerolls, man, it always is broken. It's just hard not to take indirect really hard to, to validate and tell because of how kind of bad smart missiles yeah, are. Right I mean, AP, I mean, AP I, nothing is like still AP nothing. Indirect, I mean, Brad, I was on the you SMS know, smart you know. uh, SMS rail, but losing twin link to make some way less effective i mean i agree just because you, you're like hey should i need to high roll everybody with strength five you know what i mean yeah i i, I don't disagree it's just i that, i kind of want to throw that out there for everybody watching just because i i'm not I, gonna flat out write it off because it, it does have a good case for it right i'm just saying that right now i mean that's where i would i would take burst cannons instead of I, uh, I, it, 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 to be honest if with you, you see a lot of Eldar, then yeah, of course. It's know. just, I can see it, but it, my, my whole thing is, is that in my mind, the Sky Rays are barely ever peeking their noses out and barely sniping shit. And then I spire the smart missile systems to something else because I don't, I kind of just don't want to be in range. A burst well, cannon. a lot of this list too, because it's Monka is driving into your face. Yeah, really, true story, so, true story, true story. You know. On the I mean, right like, side, all the units I want to put SMS on still have twin linked on them. So, yeah. Which, which well, I, did those, you did like, you did you message me the list? By, did yeah. you message me your list? By the way, sir. No, you never told me to. We I also sent you. I also sent you a crew list too, Brad. Well, I'm gonna fix that up and make it happen also, in just a real second. Real quick, uh, while before we move on from uh, Justin's Mokka list, I do think Justin has missed the most powerful unit in Mokka. Uh, it should be, I think, in all Mont Godless right now, and uh, Justin doesn't have it in there. Uh, missile broadsides and Mont oh, are that's disgusting. fair. Okay, watch this. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna start a debate right now. So why we, missile broadsides? No, 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 no. I, I, I wanna know. no I, I, I wanna, why not crew talks? Well, 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 guys, let's let's start both of them. Fuck you. Uh, you know, I'm gonna put up another goddamn poll because well, let's, let's, let's here's see the my thing. Of this poll right Rail now. broadsides plus six missile drones. Full rerolls. You're already searching for sixes. I actually think this is monster in Kayan. T- Lyle and I talked about this earlier today. I mean, a bit, a bit yesterday. I don't know. I disagree, but I disagree with you. I know. You, he disagreed with me. That's my that, my point was, I think that double exploding sixes is the best place for missile drones. And 
Lyle said you're smoking crack. And the you reason sh- the missile broadsides are, or the reason broadsides, I prefer the missiles. I guess you can make an argument for real sides. The reason broadsides are good at Monca is they get an extra 13 inches of movement turn one if you want them to. Like that's the issue. Mm-hmm. And this is, <laughs> is assuming... that you could scout, you could scout them, and you could just auto advance them six any turn you need them to get in position. This is assuming that they can shoot if they FAQ. Yes, because right now we, they don't if, have gun drones. If right? Kalyan works the way, or if Montcal works the way we assume it should, which is that guiding something gives it assault, then there's no, like otherwise the entire army doesn't work because you can't guide anybody unless both units have assault when you advance. So it doesn't matter. Um, so if we assume that that is what they intend, is that guiding someone gives them assault weapons, then yes, the missile broadside's ability to their Hindrance has always been the fact they move five inches. If all of a sudden they can scout seven and then they can move 11 inches for one CP and then they already have built in twin linked on all of their missiles. Like they're just, they're going to just delete things. You pop them with breachers. They both get plus one, the plus one AP to two things. And Maka is absurd. If you're going with weight of dice, like I, I have not gone in the per, uh, Piranha and Sky Ray direction. I've gone with, I'm just going to, take a billion paper cuts and be able to kill anything if I shoot it hard enough on the whatever turn I want, if I focus fire. So I'm going all breachers and things with lots of shots like the missile broadsides. Missile broadsides get 18 full rerolls to hit and wound if you want them to. Um, and then they get another uh, 12 with full rerolls to hit if you just take the missile drones. Tell me why, uh, the, big, the, tell me why the big guns aren't better though. So six big I guns. I want weight of dice. Six we'll big bullets. gun shots plus what is it 12 missiles is still a volume of shots and the big gun shots riggedy wreck shit pick a rig motherfucker just crush shit sure but like i'm not i what what am i what am i trying to kill with the rail gun everything because i want my broad, let me rephrase my, my broadsides are this big question. and they cost what me am 270 I trying to kill with points that i'm not going to move block anyway because you've always told me if you can move block something instead of killing it you should so what do i need real whoa, guns whoa, for whoa. that my breacher army is not going to just move block lyle don't use my own logic against me i hate that <laughs> that don't don't start using logic and facts against me that upsets me a lot so so to lyle's point the entire army has lethal hits and if you have lethal hits, the rail guns aren't going to really benefit because of they don't get into devastating wounds anymore. And you're going to get more lethal hits with the quantity of missile shots. How many shots do the high yield missile pods get per broadside? Six twin linked. Six twin linked. So you have a total of 18 shots. You're going to be auto hitting three, or sorry, auto wounding three, probably more because you have full rerolls. So we'll say five. You know, that's pretty solid. And then you're twin linked. So you're probably going to wound another. 10 times. So you're going to be wounding 12 to 15 times with the high yield missile think, pods. I'm trying to remember. I think they're still strength eight, are they? I think they're strength, uh, seven. strength seven. They're seven, yeah. one, two. Strength seven. Yeah. Yeah. So missile but strength drones, seven th- is still the right number to always wound everything on five. I mean, it's two damage in your. It, tell me why that's not better for Kaya. Because I don't you'll think never you're going to be able to get it in position over and over in Calyon. You don't have the 11 inch move. Okay, yeah. let, let's just talk about pre positioning. Can we talk about, let's, okay, I agree with you on WTC terrain because it's. And GW terrain. Yeah, GW, GW, I feel like you guys have at least the middle slash the middle plus the one other objective. I, I, I'll bring this up on TT, I, TTS I think... right now. I think the railgun ones are better on WTC terrain, where you can shoot stuff they can't hide in the back. True. Whereas in WTC, you can actually shoot the full the middle four... of the table. I want the missile broadside. No, I, I, anything they're sitting to the middle of the you table, know what? the missiles are better. I actually than the rails. agree with your argument right now on that because of the fact that on WTC, I can shoot the full range of my guns because of the terrain types. So I can fire one board board length to the other board length. So here's a question because you brought it up with the smart missile systems, Lyle. Are plasma rifles dead? Because they reduce the range. So now they're 18 inches. Like everyone was taking them on broadsides. Everyone was taking them on riptides. Everyone was taking them on crisis suits. Are they dead? Like, do you think you'll see mass plasma rifles? So I guess the question is like, who can take them that you, that's the best, like that's better than whatever else they could take. All right. So like, riptide. It, it, a riptide I'd rather have and Mont I'd rather have the fusion gun. Okay. Broadsides, you prefer smart missiles? 
Yeah, because I broadsides I'm going weight of dice anyway. So and honestly with both of them, like if those are the only thing I if I want indirect and I'm taking a, a unit of three broadsides and three riptides anyway, then I can get um eighteen twin linked indirect. I'll probably just do that anyway, because that's the only place I'm getting the twin linked SMS. Real quick. So real, on real, those units, I probably just want SMS anyway. Gentlemen, real quick pause. Let's go to the wall real quick. Because Tim says with stealth suits being more viable in Kion. You will easily be able to rapid ingress rail sides and get the angles, and I I don't argue with that. I actually think that that's a really good point. Does it say by deep strike or does it say just rapid ingress? Period? Either one. So to you be have honest, rapid to, ingress within six inches. Yeah, I mean be either one to be honest with you, because I think that like you can get especially on GW terrain. It's an interesting idea. I mean, seriously, I, talk I about GW3. So they, they, they have to be three inches of the Celsius. Yeah, but say GW3, they, they they literally go over slightly. Remember, they have the big piece with the small piece connected, and then you can literally see their home base plus the neutral plus the center if you set that up right. I, I, I don't, don't feel like, it's wrong here. I don't like broadsides coming out of reserve because I won't have the ability to move them a second time. That means I had better find the absolute perfect spot for them to exist for three turns. Also, since I'm not going to get those rerolls, there's 50% of your games, or I'm not going to get those exploding sixes uh, the first two turns. That means 50% of your games, you got to have the stealth suit survive until turn three. Because you're not going to be able to rapid ingress and then immediately get the explosions on the next turn half the time. Because you'll be going uh, first or second. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like half the time, you're not going to be able to. I get, I get you guys, but like he, he's not wrong though that you'll get full access to three objectives on multiple terrain sets. Yeah, but that's why I love it on Mont Ca, because I can get my broadside in position for the first one threaten them off, then if I need to, like, if I pick a flank, I'm probably more likely to put the broadsides on a flank than in the middle, just because I feel like I can protect them more on one side if I use the table to screen out, you know, half the angles you could come at me from. So if I put the broadsides on, on a flank, then I can use that strat realistically on GW train to get from that objective over to the middle objective very easily, so they can threaten two at the same time. Versus on Kalyon, I just need to stay somewhere and hope you walk in front of me three turns in a row, and I don't love that plan. Yeah, yeah, would, yeah, yeah, for Kaya, gonna, is would broadsides be good for the solid image, solid image production unit where you could do a redeploy? It's, it's, then I you're think, not outflanking them. I think that thing's overrated. Or sorry, overpriced. I know it's still cheap, but it's still it feels like every time I make a list, I go, eh, do I want to drop something for that? I do want to go to Eloise's comment right now on the wall, guys, and I'd like to give a conversation for this. Uh, I'll just I'll leave it up to the three of you. Eloise says, "Sorry, we 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 says, as a group of mostly seasoned Warty, Warhammer 40k players, how do you think the new Tau book compares to other recent releases in terms of its impact on the game?" I think the Tau book is by far the best book that has come out in 10th edition, and I think it is if people. Most people probably play Tau because they like Gundams. If people are willing to do the not Gundam suit things, I think Tau is primed to be the most oppressive army in 10th edition since Eldar. I, I think that I'll give you my quick, I'm going to give you my just my quick two cents and I'm going to let you guys argue over it. I'm just going to leave it free for the three of you. My two cents is it is equal or maybe greater than the Necron Impact. Continue. I would agree with that. I think it's I think it's on par at least with the Necron book, and there's some things that it feels very obvious what what's good in the book right now, and it, it seems like there's a lot that's good in the book. So like digging out what's between what's good and what's great and what's really oppressive, like that's going to be interesting to see in the next like month or so, um, where we where we land with like the list that's like, oh my god, please nerf this because it's like killing everyone. Um, so I mean, it, yeah, I would say it's at least on par with with Necrons, and it has the potential to be even worse, you know, because we're we're like three days into having it, right? So not know, even the, really. <laughs> yeah, the the Tau uh, Meta Monday is right in the chat. The Tau Army's been doing better lately because people stopped trying to play Crisis suits, 
and had already started playing more and more breachers. This book just says keep doing that and do it harder. And I mean, historically, Tau's like the most polarizing army, right? Either you love playing them or you hate playing them. If you are not playing Tau and you play against an optimized Montca build, you're gonna hate playing 40k. Like if, especially if you're not like an ultra competitive player. Like if you're like just like a casual person or mid mid table person, you go to a tournament and you play against a fully optimized Montcob build. I think you're gonna really not enjoy the game. It yeah. it just has the ability to be that oppressive if someone wants to play it that aggressive. I don't know that playing that aggressively is even the right way to play it. I think the ability just to scare people off and then make them mess up and then you immediately table is probably still the right way to play it. But if you play against someone who's got an optimized build and they just want to go say, I'm never going to let you move and I'm going to kill all your stuff in three turns, your people are just not going to have fun playing against that anyway. Yeah. Yeah, Monka really has the ability to do that, like, turn one nail in the coffin um, across the table, killing you in your I, deployment. I still don't zone. even think like, turn one's going to be right most of the time, but I think, like... No, I don't two, think it'll be, like, the like, look at, like you said, not Look at Brandon's play. game in the finals yeah. against TJ. Like, TJ's like, I can't do anything. If I leave, I die. And he mm -hmm. was playing Kalyan. Imagine how much worse that would be if Brandon's like, my entire army can see you on turn two. You better not move anyway. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's just what Monka has the ability to do. My concern is they don't have the quantity of shots that Tau has had historically, and that's why I'm still sticking with Kayan. I'm also not a very aggressive player. Like, I know Lyle, I know you can be, Justin can be, definitely Tom. So, like, I'm not even really looking at Monka because I'd rather play the more cagey style. Because in my meta down here, like, there's a lot of close combat armies, a lot of world eaters. And, like, if I play Monka and world eaters, it's going to be bad. If I don't wreck them, turn one which there's a good chance I won't, like, they will pick up my entire army. See, but that's where, like, that goes back to the list building. Like, if you build your Mont Ka list with 20 Farstalkers and 20 Crew Carnivores, like, I don't know what the World Eaters are supposed to really do to you. Because they have to go kill the Farstalkers and Carnivores to get to you, and every time they do it, they're going to lose, like, 33% of the army. Yeah. Yeah, the trade there is terrible. I'm really worried about the retaliation, to be honest. That that that's my biggest thing with retaliation is the three man units, if you want them to be effective, have to have a leader, you know, a far side, a commander or whatever. And then I feel like I'm giving up so many points. I just I don't know. I just I'm looking at our for instance, our Adepticon list. I'm 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 sorry, but I'm going back to those. I just feel like Justin, if I dropped in front of you with a retaliation list, I just mm -hmm. feel like you would just pick me up. You know what I mean? I would do damage. And then your strike back would pick up, you know, eight hundred to a thousand points in my army, and I just feel like I, I haven't made a successful retaliation list in my head. How about that? The the problem with crisis suits, I think. So the problem that I've seen with crisis suits, I know Brandon swore by them, and I think Lyle was swearing by them too. I think a lot of Tau players were swearing by them. Is having them trade evenly, right? This is like a five hundred point unit. Now it's only a three man unit with a hundred to 120 point commander so maybe like a 250 to 300 point unit depending on enhancements and stuff but if that drops in and kills like 100 points of your opponent's army and then dies that was not a good investment yeah i'm just i think retaliation cadre has the ability to be one of the best versions of tau in specific meta conditions because if we get to a meta where i can for two three turns in a row whatever deep strike ap2 flamers three inches away from you there's a meta where that is backbreaking i mean i don't know that we're in that meta how, how about this but i think uh, that world exists how about this that might be against the crew you know meta. what fuck it we're, we're just gonna go with it retaliation for me i'm gonna i'm just gonna say it i think is a team's only list screw it i'm, I'm that's where i am so if you the, were pick so brad you because team events are coming up you know, there's the the Dayton event. There's the Canadian event. Even though they're not using the Hot new Codex, summer. you know, you have all the team events this summer. Which detachment are you taking? I think Kroot throws the most wrenches in any game plan. I, I, I mean, agree. If Rad's playing it. He's taking the Kroot detachment. I'm taking sure. a Kroot. I'm taking for Kroot for sure. But to be honest with you, because in in teams, I think that I could cause the most havoc, and I could also defend, because I can get my ass kicked and spend two CP every you know, round two player turns and bring 20 guys back and still steal your objectives. I mean, even getting my head kicked in, I still could score a buttload of points. 
And like, if you have war shapers, you could do for this free is potentially. A, so this is a really specific. I don't. I just don't think they're gonna let it work that way. Uh, I, this is a really specific question though. In the crew detachment, how how likely do you think it is that we just want to play three ethereals just to make sure we have two CP every turn when they kill stuff? But you already do. You, you, I, I'm playing right now. I'm if playing. you guarantee throw away a, a strat every turn, but then no, you're always going half. But I'm not. I, I'm, I'm going to do it. I, I don't know if I need to do anything else. If if Brandon goes, then I go. That's two CP. That's two CP every turn. I just don't do anything else. Right. It's not. It's not going to work if he goes first. Right. I. I but I'm not losing a unit turn one. Yeah, if I'm losing a turn one, yeah, turn one, I, you know, why did I go? Why did I? They have the ability to kill a unit turn one. Sure, if they 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 kill a unit on turn one, why did I deploy like a fucking idiot? It, I mean, that's that's my fault at that point in time. I I refuse to believe that in a world where Brad has cloned himself and he's playing Kroot against another version of Brad, and Brad's playing Eldar or Drew Carey or something, that Brad's not going to find a way to start killing the stuff he wants to early in the game. Yeah. It is still 20 toughness three body. It's like it's not with, with a five up interval, man. It's just 30. Uh, okay. So, it, so it's, it's uh, like a 26 man toughness three bodies. I, I right? get it. But the thing is, is yeah. that why am I letting people be seen? Is all oh, my, you know what I mean? Like you're, I'm, I'm hiding behind a building. I'm pushing, I, I infiltrate. I also scout. I'm, I'm putting mm -hmm. myself in the best possible space where I'm hoping that you can get the minimum amount. I can't stop all of the shots, but I can mitigate most of the shots. And so are you not putting all 120 bodies on the table then? I'm going to put, it, I'm going to, because most, it's hard to hide. I know, have but the th that's the thing. It, depending on the board is, is, and I hate to say that that's my pol politician answer, but it's going to depend on the mission and the board, but I'm going to put 100% of the time. I'm going to put at least 60, probably 80, on the board and i'll probably reserve 40 ish you know what i mean because okay. there's just not space because also i have a big fat ass i've got sky rays in the back i've got piranhas in the back i need yeah. places to go and that's that is actually the weakness of the tower mm -hmm. army that i've seen so far is i need space I need, well, really don't forget the trail shaper also game. the trail shapers redeploy don't forget also let you move crew into reserves so you can just put True. all of them on the table to make your opponent deploy as if they were all on the table, and then you just peel off a flank, and now he's got stuff out of position. Mm -hmm. you know, also, to... on the on the wall, Inception is talking about he saw uh, Pure Tide Grundy uh, playing Crute Swarm on stream, I guess. Uh, we're never going to play three hammerheads over three sky rays. I mean, just not this channel. This I mean, channel's yeah. not going to. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's just it's hard too because of the the, the efficiency. But I'm going to meta money on the wall too because he goes, wouldn't a close combat Necron list just be your hard counter in teams? Not really because what happens is the close combat the you know the Canopic Court Necrons the close combat type list hits twenty crew two to three turns in a row. The Canoptic uh, Core also for those uh, for those raids to actually kill Kroot reliably, they have to get rerolls because they hit on fours. I don't yeah. know how often you're controlling two of the three No Man's Land objectives when you have 300 OC. In and, and the thing is, is I kind yeah, of you're not going to get power matrix. Yeah, you're not going to get power matrix. But I also just kind of don't care to be perfectly honest with it because the math says that with your attacks you don't kill all. They have 24 attacks. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I'm if I'm saving they 30, kill 20 Kroot. even without the Final Pain. I'm still yeah. with with a you know a five up invul and I save thirty three percent of the time. They have a six. They have a six up invul. In Sorry, six combat. up, six up in, in in close combat. Either way, it doesn't it doesn't matter. I still don't lose the entire unit, which means that they still have to do stuff to me, which means that I can again for two CP I bring the whole squad back and they don't have that option. So I actually think also, that also I have the advantage. We, we make fun of how little the crew can kill i think they can kill wraith if you put 120 guys shooting race i think they'll kill the race well it's not even yeah. just 100 shooting race it's it's 100 shooting race plus close combat attacks again we we keep talking about just the crew and uh, the towel backfield yeah exactly we, the towel you know, backfield is all preface is, off. Yeah, we have riptide series and riptide sitting in the right, back 100 blasting man. those things we, we, yeah they're all getting guided and fucking people up it's just it, it, you know everything else that every other detachment's doing that detachment's doing that too with all that bullshit crude stuff happening also we didn't even talk about what is possibly one of the most powerful parts of the crude detachment and that you get two infiltrator auras because they do have so an walkers. enhancement for the trail stalker 
to have a Which, 12 inch deep strike denial well, they have you a, can take dark strider and that and you can get two 12 inch bubbles we have two you have 12 inch bubbles but you also have pre-game moves with a six inch yeah. aura i mean it's like i it's they, so good the, the normal plan of like well if i can't go over you i'll come in behind you no <laughs> you have to go through but you you ball. also have so much ability to just dictate the board because you basically especially let, let's just say gw train because that's what we play in america quite a bit if if i can just push my stuff up if I'm, right now i'm playing justin and i'm playing on type one or type two because i see that quite a bit and i get to scout six inch up on top of all of those buildings and yes it's scout seven but whatever i'm just saying it's where i can literally toe touch you know wrap around every building i can literally get within all of the objectives and just say do something about this you can't see me and your opponent has to forcefully engage which is fine because then you flank shoot because you're tau dude how many games this adepticon did both of you just literally go oh it looks like you came to the bottom of the screen i guess i will murder everything here and then kind of move my way up which is the same way you can do with the crew detachment and or to be perfectly to be fair the mont cow detachment does the very same thing but it uses breachers instead of crew yeah and it can still use crew it, yeah exactly it's true it's not it's not as good as the crew detachment because the crew detachment is tailored to using them but you know it, it can still use them and be perfectly fine i mean i was using i was using 10 crew carnivores in my adepticon list you know and they they were great for screening stuff out and doing deploy teleport homers and shit in the middle of the board so and the thing is is that the the biggest thing about the crew detachment is don't get me wrong everyone i don't think that they're gonna stay they're gonna they're gonna live through everything all I'm saying is no. that if I put them, if I put the unit in front of Lyle, he has to commit extra shit because he knows that I'm saving 33% of his attacks. You know what I mean? Right now, you know that if I shoot this many shots, the crew die. You know what I mean? They don't have a chance. Now in the new detachment, you have to overcommit the units, which everyone knows is fantastic because. Every time you have to overcommit, it's some shit that's not taking out my other flank, the the real flank, basically. All right, so I'm gonna stop us because we're talking about all the praises of the crew, like all the crazy shit they could do. What are the weaknesses? Or has the codex made them completely impossible to defeat? Nope. Like Eloise wants to know the weaknesses. Uh -huh. Monday wants the, to know the weaknesses. Okay. Jr. does. Here, here's the weaknesses of crew. You were losing Flamers. out in one play. I mean, oh, yeah, sorry. Flamers. Okay, I'm out. Mic drop, I'm out. Uh, Flamers are the, the bane of the existence of your armies. Also, Flamers with Overwatch are the bane of your army. But the, the bane of your army is actually one of the biggest things is your selection of strats and enhancements is shitty compared to the rest of the detachments. Because you effectively are like, what am I doing every turn? Two CP, I'm bringing back twenty guys. What else are you doing? I don't understand the question. You know, like that. There, there's merit for loan op. I mean, maybe to be honest, but you have to be saving CP all the time. It, it depends on how they word the war shapers. Uh, I think the war shapers should get. Yeah, I, I, I'm just assuming it doesn't work that way because I don't want to count on it. They, I mean, tell me, you know what, Lyle? You said Makas the best. Tell me why they're the best and not crew. Uh, because they just have, I mean, the crude have the ability to deny primary, uh, with physical models. Uh, Kalyan has the ability to kill people. Makka has the ability to do both on the first three turns. And just, if you can control the pace of the game and make the other person have to play the first three turns, then you're just one taking away models and two taking away points. So if you can if you can build up a big enough lead in the first three turns, there's not a lot of armies just won't be able to come back if you only give them two turns to do it. Yeah. The other like Kroot is great at move blocking. If someone can kill them, then their plan's over. Kalyan is great at killing stuff. If someone can build up a big enough lead in the first two turns or the first three turns going first or whatever, then it doesn't matter how much you kill if they still built a 50 point lead. Uh, I feel like Monkha is just the balance in between the two. 
Give my, it my concern with my my concern with the crude is I think they're going to be too expensive to do what, all the stuff you guys say they're going to do. I don't think we'll have the the quantity of bodies that we need at a two thousand point well, list to do what me, we want to me, do. Give me your reasons. You said before that you think that the Kalyan attachment is going to be your go to. Tell me why. It's all what we've been playing all along. You could play it aggressively. You don't have to. Like, instead of having crisis suits with Exemplar Kion, you give it on a Cadre Fireblade, and now all of a sudden you have a Breacher unit with Exploding Sixes and with a Devilfish Guiding. Uh, it just plays... I, I, It's a known commodity, and it puts out the most damage out of all the lists. It puts out the most damage. You're not against wrong. all types of armies. I I disagree with that, because I, I pl I've played Galleon plenty, and I still think that a lot of their damage came from the fact that you had one unit that you could use every turn, fire and fading. The damage you can bring now is not going to be damage that you can bring, and they guarantee it doesn't die on the crackback. And that's where my concern is with Kalyan, is in the first, on turns two and three, when you still have to kill things, you need to be able to kill things with the meaningful units you brought, but also be sure they don't die before you get to use them again. And I don't think Kalyan has that in its pocket anymore, which concerns me. I mean, you were mainly fire fading what? Your big crisis suit brick? And yeah. that's just, I mean, that's just, that that's just not existed times. anymore. Yeah. yeah, it's just gone. Hold on. You're right, but that's my point, is that you now have to trade instead. You have yeah. to kill things, you must lose things. And, and that's, that's why I'm taking more breachers. The way... And that's why but, I'm taking like, more breachers. Right. I'm... But my the breachers are going to die faster than everything else. And my concern with the breachers is that in Cal Yon, I want them alive in the late game, but I need them to score unless depending on how you build your list, like the list that you showed, you need to use breachers to score early. So then my yep. most damaging unit's dead before turn four. And because like when of... I play Kalyon now, I do everything I can to keep my breachers alive until turns four and five. I make sure oh, they I... are the last unit I have alive. I throw those bastards and... away immediately. Cheers, See, that... you, you guys play them wildly different. You know what? Screw this. I, I just play oh, wildly different than you, you, you guys. You guys pause on this. I'm going to the Waffle Master. Justin Cook. Brandon said you have a stupid face. What do you think mm -hmm. about Tau? Yeah. What attachment are you going with? Well, I, I still think Mon Ka, I, and I think it's uh, kind of what kind of what Lyle said, but also it's the fact that um, you get to fully utilize your your detachment rules uh, while you have your entire army. Um, and I think that was kind of the when I was playing Kalyan, I was always like, you know, OK, well, we got to keep enough of our army alive until turn three where the army turns on and then it blows your opponent off the table in the last three turns of the game. And that works. And it's, it, that's great if you are playing that way. But just play an army that has its full utilization turns one through three, you know, like it just drives up. It does its thing. It murders you and, and the game's over. Um, and, you know, like Brandon and I were talking about this and we were like, well, one way or another, all those games are going to be over in 30 minutes. Um, so because, yeah, because if right. you come out and you don't clap hard enough or I can deploy in a way where you're not leveraging all your shots, mm -hmm. it, it's going to be a rough match. I'm just saying that, like, really, though, here's the thing, guys. If you're hitting flanks super hard and you're preserving your units and you're denying shots, you're not denying every shot. I keep saying this but you're mitigating the shots. I feel like you can be alive way later in the game. So I'm not saying that to, to be fair, I don't know what the strongest attachment is. And I'm actually super goddamn excited about it. I actually think that the Tao book has done a fan fucking tastic job of saying everything is pretty good. Give me, yeah. give me some closing remarks, fellas. We got to rock it out. Well, I think two. I, I think. Uh, well, I think two months from now we're all playing retaliation because it's just unbeatable. So they cracks the code. And it's just like, okay, well, we didn't think about that, but it just wins every game. You're like twenty-seven um, suits you know. just crushes everyone. On I, I know, right? Like you know, or, or something like you know, I was talking like all big suits and then three squads of uh, sun forges or something like that. Yeah. Just. Yeah, like like somebody like I said, somebody cracks the code, and, and then we're back here. You know, but could they, could they all be the very compatible? As, as... 
I'm happy the book is as deep as it is because I think three months from now we're going to get a Mont Cobb nerf because that army is just going to be obviously the best, and then I'm glad we have three other good detachments to go play. Yeah. I, I think this is the first codex that's been out from Space Marines, Tyranids, Necrons, Admax, Dark Angels, where all the detachments are actually viable, and I can see winning a GT with each detachment. Like, there's certain Space Marine detachments that they're just utter trash. And the the worst attachment being the Kroot one, just because of killing power, you could easily win a GT with that if no one's prepared or they're geared for anti-tank. Like, there's a point where you just can't kill enough bodies. Yeah. You're not wrong. Look, if I had access to this Kroot list, I would play it, because I, I think it's silly. I don't know how good it is, but oh, I would play it. And see I want to tell you is. some crazy shit that Lyle told me yesterday. He goes, Brad... I think you might be right about some of the crude stuff, but who has all these models? And I told him exactly how the Brad thinks, which is make the list first. Who cares who has the models? Just figure it out later. Look, man, when we're talking about a crew list, and I don't even think Brandon has the models to build this list. I, he's, there's, I refuse I think to the believe last that. I, I refuse to believe that. I think the last models that Brandon got, he glued in the crisis suits or some shit. I don't <laughs> even know wrong. that Brandon has 120 crew walking around. So right, now, right, bro, right, now, right now, I have 80. He has but all I, of the crew. Right now, I have 80. Um, I, I just think, I don't think crew are going to be as cheap as you think they are. Can we all agree that if Kroot come out at 55 points per model that we're all going to race to see which one of us can win a GT with them first? All right, we'll take it yeah. immediately. Also, this is what I'm going to end on, guys. Eloise says, closing question. What advice would you give to players looking to adapt to the changes introduced in the new Tau Codex? I'm going to start on the wall. I'm going to go Justin, Lyle, Brandon last. Justin, tell me what your answer to that question is. Yeah, okay, changes introduced in the new Tau Codex. Uh, try out a lot of stuff because it's uh, like the Wild West, you know. I like, love it. I love that guy right try, there. Yeah, try out, try out like, try out different detachments. Uh, don't get too locked into things like, you know, because it's going to be changing a lot in the next month or so. Um, we still don't know what the actual points are going to be. That's a that's a huge thing. Um, but don't get in your mind that you like. Oh, I have to go and buy like a, a bunch of XYZ units because, you know, they said that Piranha are going to be great. Like play a bunch of different stuff, get familiar with what the different detachments do, because that's going to be more important than like, oh, just go and buy like a million crisis suits or like 120 crew right now or whatever, because who knows, they could be 90 points for 10 crew. Like, Agreed, man. I, can, I couldn't yeah. agree more, everybody. Make, make your list your own. Also, do not be afraid to try dumb shit i do not care what a talking head told you whether a unit's good or not put it on the board try it for yourself that's how you learn 40k that's how you learn your style period i uh, love it uh lyle what's if, your take if you have crisis suits don't bother putting them on the table unless they have melted guns pew pew Just don't do it <laughs> like never take the ones with missiles and plasma they're awful and exactly. unless you're playing Retaliation Cadre, don't worry about the ones with Flamers. I was just want to say, Flamers, okay. Just take the melt -ups. Don't Don't listen to that goddamn talking head, because Retaliation Cadre, Flamers for days, baby. Yeah, if you're taking Count Retaliation Cadre, you're still starting with three units of the melt guns and then you can take Flamers. You're still <laughs> never taking Plasma or Missile. Just don't do it. Mm, true this story. is the perfect reason why you should magnetize your uh, Crisis Suits and do what mm. I did not do. Yeah. <laughs> or own How 50 are you not them? magnetized, by the way? What what is wrong with you? I, well, you can't put a magnet in a crew wrist. What are you talking about? Yeah, they're they're very yeah. difficult. They're very tiny. They got tiny little fragile wrists. Those little tiny wrists. Yeah. Big wrists, small hands. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so if I had to give some advice to somebody who was looking to start Tau or they're trying to bring their Tau into the new index, there's plenty of viable options. Like we've been going around and around in circles about what are the good choices in this, and I don't think there's any bad choices except for the train pieces. Those are awful. Uh, <laughs> So everything appears to be viable in one way, shape, or another, depending on which detachment and how you use it. It all depends on the points. We still don't have the points, and we're probably not going to have the points until the beginning of May. So 
Let's keep the fingers crossed. If, if crude are 55 points for 10 guys and I could take 120 dudes for 660 points, you're damn straight I'm going to start there. But I do not think that's what's going to happen. I think it'd be a little bit more pricey. And that's what that's the thing. We don't know the points. Until we know the points, we can't really build the most effective lists and start taking them to the tournaments. I'm going to tell you right now, if Crute are 55 points, Brad is going to stop at Brandon's house on his way to the Mayhem GT in June and pick up that army from Brandon and take it to North Carolina. It's going to be a it's real okay. weird spot. It's okay, because I'm going to win before that, so I'll take him to the Rocky Top GT. Won't we'll I, I will give you a bad list, so I win the first one. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. I appreciate it. Let's, let's uh, shamelessly promote our things, and then we're going to rock out, fellas. Uh, that, that starts with anybody that wants to say anything. You know what? I'll start. Uh, I because have a new I... website. It's called bradsucks.com. Uh, <laughs> you, know what? Are... you know what? It's not new. I already had the namesake for it because that's how self-loathing I am. No, you, no your website is bradfucks.com. It's completely Whoa. different content. True story. Are, they, are these only fans pages? Like, can you get It a gets Patreon real weird, by the way, and real cheap for what you want to say. <laughs> well... If you want to see a crazy person build 120 crew uh, rampagers, crew talks, and everything, if you check out Still Frosty Gaming on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and stillfrostygaming.com, I'll be posting all the pictures of my crew progress. Uh, earlier today, Eloise and I did an unboxing of the new crew box set and talking about all the crew domination plans I have in the next two months. Also remember that Still Frosty is still spacefrosty.com. You are a monster. I don't know why I'm your friend. <laughs> oh my god. 40keylorecast.com, 40keylorecast anywhere you want to go. Uh be so, so the... you can do a lorecast for Crute now to make it up to me. I'm also going to start doing video games by the way, and that's not until next month though. So oh all I have to say is Queens wave us out of here my friends. And until the thank next time, thank you everybody. Time, thank you so much for watching, and you'll see us Same next milky. week.